Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In programming, it very often happens that you totally fuck up. And then you have a problem, but not if you use Git luckily. So what this video will basically be about is what happens if you destroy your code, how can you jump back to a point where things were still working, or how you can just undo your changes. And that is what I want to start with, how you can actually undo a commit in Git. So let's actually just start by fucking up. Go into the new line and write anything that will produce an error. Today is a good day. And let's commit that. Let's click on that error here to commit the changes. Then let's call this third commit, or actually to stay consistent. This is our third commit. And click on commit then you will see that there are errors found, but we can still click on commit and commit those changes. And if we then come back to our code, run our app, and then we will see that our app doesn't even compile. And we wonder, oh, why is that? Of course, in this case, it's pretty obvious, but in a real project, it's not always obvious. Because in a real project, it could be that you made a lot of changes that you don't get together again and you don't know which changes you made. Well, actually, you could even check that with Git, but you don't want to undo all of that by hand, of course. So let's actually see how that works to revert a commit to undo the changes. Let's first take a look at the command line, just as usual in this series. I will show you the command line version first and then show you how you can do that with Android Studio. First of all, we need to somehow reference the commit we want to revert. And in git, we can list all of our commits with the git lock command. If we now press enter, then you can see that there are a bunch of commits. In our case, there are three. You can press enter to scroll down. And here's our third commit that we want to revert. And in git, each commit basically is referenced by a hash. So you can see that combination here of letters and numbers is a hash. That is just a unique value for each commit. And if we want to revert this commit, our third commit, then we need to copy that hash, select it, copy it. And if we now go down, we can go out of that log view by pressing Q. Let's clear that up a little bit. And now we basically type git revert and paste the hash of the commit we want to revert here. And if we now press enter, then you can see our editor opens up. In my case, that's Notepad++, but in your case, that can be a different editor. It doesn't really matter because what Git wants to do now is it wants to commit the changes. So even though we re revert our commit, that doesn't mean that our changes are lost. With Git, we can always recover them. So if you want to change the commit message of that revert commit, then you can do that right here. Just change the text of that, save that file and just close it. But I'll be fine with that. Just close the file now. And then this commit will be reverted. You can see the line where we fucked up is now gone. But if we now take a look in our version control tab down here, go to log, then you can see here is a commit that Git made for us where we reverted our changes. And if we take a look at the file tab here and double click on main activity, then you can see that our changes where we fucked up are still safe with Git. So even if we reverted that commit by accident, we could still jump back to that commit and have our old changes back basically. But that's not what we want to do here. What I want to do instead is I want to fuck up one more time and show you how we can revert a commit from Android Studio. So without the command line, just write anything here, commit those changes. This is our fourth commit. Click on commit, ignore the error message. And then we can simply right click on that commit and click on revert commit. Then this commit message will show up again because we should make a commit here. I'll leave the message like it is, click on commit, and there we go. Our line was reverted and our error is gone. But what happens if we just want to switch our current commit? So we want to set the state of our project to the state of a specific commit. 
In Git, that is called checking out. So when we say we check out a commit, that means we switch our current commit to the commit we want to check out. So let's say we notice that we didn't fuck up in the third commit and we want to jump back to that state. What we can then do is we can go to our terminal, type git log again to list all of our commits, press enter until we see our third commit, this one, here's our third commit, then we copy the hash of the commit again, copy it, press Q to get out of that git log statement, um, clear that window here with control L, and then we can type git checkout and simply paste the hash of the commit we want to switch to. And if we now press enter, then you can see head is now at that hash. This is our third commit. The head is nothing else than just our current commit. So it's basically just a pointer that points to our current commit we are working in. And if you now take a look at our source code, then you can see here is our today is a good day message again which was from our third commit. And also if we take a look in our version control tab, then you can see that this yellow button, or this yellow thing, I don't know what that is, is now at our third commit. So that is basically that yellow thing points or is basically the pointer to the current commit. So that tells us that we are currently at the third commit, at this specific commit, I mean. And if we want to do the same from within Android Studio, which is much easier in my opinion, then we can just go into our version control tab here under the log tab and select the commit we want to check out to, we want to switch to. Let's just switch to the latest one, this revert. This is our fourth commit. Right click on that, click on check out and then master. And then you can see we switch to that commit. The changes are now switched out in our project too. So basically the whole project stage is reset to this specific commit here. But what happens if we have some local changes that we haven't commit yet and we want to check out to another commit? Then that would basically mean our local changes are lost. No, it doesn't because let's try that actually out. Add another print line statement here, um, local change. And if we now want to check out a commit here, let's go back to our third commit here right click on check and click on check out. Then you can see your local changes to the following files will be overridden by checkout. Android Studio can stash the changes, check out and unstash them after that. So what the fuck is Android Studio actually talking about? Well, when we have local changes and we want to switch to another commit, then we have two options basically. Option one would be to just commit our changes. So our line here, local change, if we just make a commit of, out of that line, then it would basically be saved in Git. And then we could simply just check out another, um, another commit like we did before. But what if that is some change we don't want to make a commit of? In that case, we can do something called stashing. That will basically save our changes, but not in a separate commit. So basically whenever your code is somehow messy and you don't want to commit those messy changes, then you can just stash those changes to save them basically temporarily and then unstash them when you come back to that commit. So that will restore them. So what Android Studio means here with smart checkout is it will stash those changes. So save them temporarily and make us able to unstash them when we come back. Or we have the option to force check out that will basically delete all of our local changes. And you should really think about if you want that. But let's first click on don't check out to cancel that because I want to show you that from the command line first. Let's go to our terminal, type git log again to get the hash of the commit we want to check out to. We want to check out to our third commit. This one, let's copy the hash again. Press Q to get out of that log. Control L to clear it. And now we can type git checkout, paste the hash of the commit. If we now press enter, you will see the error message again. So our local changes will be overwritten. Please commit your changes or stash them before you switch branches. So those are actually the two options I told you. Let's actually stash them by doing git stash here. Press enter. And then you can see safe working directory and index state. WIP, which means basically work in progress. 
on master, blah, 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 blah. And if we now write that checkout statement again, we can press the up arrow to get our latest commands. And there's our checkout command. Press enter now. Then you can see now we checked out that commit and basically set our current project state to that commit state. And if we now type git log again, then you can see it only shows us those commits that are on our head or below. So if you take a look at version control, this is our third commit is our head. There is that yellow thing. And those commits below that will be displayed by git log, but not those above that. So to actually show all of our commits, we need to type git log minus minus all. And this will show us all of our commits. And here you can see that is basically a temporary commit here that we created with that stash command, this WAP on master, so work in progress. And we could directly check that out now to get our changes back. But then we would have that basically as a separate commit in our commit list, which you don't want here. We just want to get our changes back, our safe changes in our branch revert. This is our fourth commit here. So what we will do is we will copy the hash from that commit, press Q to go out of that log statement. And now we want to check out that commit. So our revert fourth commit, press enter. You can see we checked out successfully. And you can also see that currently we don't have our local changes back. To actually get those back, we can first type git stash list to list all of our stashes. And you can see here is our single stash WAP on master from this commit. And to get that stash basically back to get the changes back from that stash, we need to type git stash apply, press enter here. And that is not really important what what it tells us here. But you can see here's our local change back. And that is what we wanted to do. And if we want to do that from within Android Studio, we can simply go to VCS in the top bar here, go to Git and simply click on stash changes. Then we can select a stash message, just write my stash message and click on create stash. Then you can see the change or the local changes were removed here. And if we want to res uh, restore them, we go to VCS again to Git and unstash changes. Then we can select our stash we want to restore, which is this one, my stash message, click on apply stash, and you can see our local changes are back. So if this video helped you to understand all that stuff that you really need to know when you fucked up in Git, like reverting commits, checking out commits, stashing your local changes, then please leave me a like for this video. Please comment below what you think about this. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. See you in the next video. Have a good day. Bye bye.